Hello again, and welcome. In today's topic we are discussing about Alzheimer. What do you know about Alzheimer's disease? It's a question that may bring a variety of answers. Alzheimer's disease is a progressive neurological disorder that predominantly affects the elderly. It's a condition that gradually chips away at memory, thinking skills, and the ability to carry out simple tasks. The roots of our understanding of this disease trace back to 1906, when a German psychiatrist and neuropathologist named Alois Alzheimer first described it. To honor his contribution to medical science, the disease was named after him. Alzheimer's is not a sudden onset condition. It's a slow, creeping disease, with complex changes beginning in the brain decades before any symptoms make themselves known. It's a stealthy enemy, silently setting up its stronghold in the brain, disrupting communication between brain cells, and leading to their ultimate death. So, what causes Alzheimer's disease? This is a question that has puzzled scientists for over a century. Although the exact cause remains elusive, we do know that Alzheimer's disease stems from complex changes in the brain that begin decades before symptoms appear. At the heart of these changes is the buildup of abnormal proteins. Two types of proteins play a significant role in the development of Alzheimer's, amyloid and tau. Amyloid proteins clump together to form plaques, while tau proteins create tangles. Picture a city with roads blocked by debris and traffic signals that no longer function. This is what's happening in the brain of someone with Alzheimer's. The plaques and tangles disrupt the smooth flow of information, causing traffic jams and chaos. As the disease progresses, these protein buildups lead to the death of brain cells. Our brains are intricate networks of cells constantly communicating with each other. When brain cells die, the network breaks down, and the brain can't function as it once did. It's like removing pieces from a complex machine. Eventually, it stops working. Moreover, Alzheimer's disrupts neurotransmitters, the brain's communication system. Neurotransmitters are chemicals that transmit signals from one neuron to another. They're like the internet of the brain, allowing cells to chat, share information, and coordinate actions. When Alzheimer's disease interferes with this communication, it's as if the internet goes down, leaving cells isolated and unable to function properly. So, while we don't have a definitive answer to what causes Alzheimer's, we understand that it involves a combination of protein buildup, cell death, and disruption of neurotransmitters. These changes lead to the loss of brain tissue and the symptoms we associate with Alzheimer's, such as memory loss, confusion, and difficulty performing familiar tasks. The causes of Alzheimer's are complex and still not fully understood. But what we do know is that these changes lead to the symptoms we associate with the disease. What are the symptoms of Alzheimer's and how does the disease progress? A question we all ask ourselves when we or our loved ones start forgetting things. Alzheimer's unfolds in a slow yet relentless progression, typically spanning three general stages mild, moderate, and severe. Each stage brings its unique set of symptoms, becoming more pronounced as the disease advances. In the mild stage, it's common to notice memory lapses. Perhaps you've forgotten a recent conversation or misplaced your keys. These may seem like typical signs of aging, but they could be early indicators of Alzheimer's. As we move into the moderate stage, memory loss and confusion become more pronounced. You might have difficulties performing familiar tasks like following a recipe or paying bills. Problem solving and judgment could also be impaired. You might notice a loved one getting lost on their way home or struggling to recall the names of close family members. It's during this stage that changes in personality and behavior may begin to surface. Anxiety, agitation, even suspiciousness can manifest, making it a particularly challenging time for caregivers. In the severe stage, symptoms escalate. Delusions or hallucinations may occur. The individual might require assistance with daily activities and eventually round-the-clock care. It's a heart-wrenching reality, but understanding these stages can help us prepare and provide the best care possible. The progression of Alzheimer's is not just a loss of memory. It's a change in the ability to connect with the world, a shift in personality, a struggle with daily tasks, it's a challenging journey, not just for the patient, but also for their caregivers. So let us remember that compassion, patience, and understanding 
can make this difficult journey a bit more bearable. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about the disease, it's about the person living with it. Who is at risk of developing Alzheimer's disease? Let's delve into that. Age is the most significant known risk factor for Alzheimer's. It's crucial to clarify that Alzheimer's is not a common part of aging. However, the risk of developing this disease does indeed increase significantly after the age of 65. Now, let's talk about family ties. If you have a parent, sibling, or child with Alzheimer's, your chances of developing the disease are higher. This increased risk is due to both genetic and environmental factors that families may share. Speaking of genes, certain genetic mutations have been linked to Alzheimer's disease. These mutations can be passed down through generations, increasing the likelihood of developing the disease. However, it's important to remember that not everyone who inherits these mutations will necessarily develop Alzheimer's. It's a complex disease with a multitude of contributing factors. Other factors also play a role. For example, cardiovascular risk factors such as high blood pressure or high cholesterol can increase your risk. These conditions can lead to heart disease and stroke, both of which have been associated with a higher risk of Alzheimer's. Another significant risk factor is head trauma. Individuals who have had severe head injuries, especially if there was a loss of consciousness, are at a greater risk of Alzheimer's disease. And finally, let's address the gender factor. Women are more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease than men. This may be due in part to women's longer life expectancy, but researchers are also looking into hormonal and chromosomal differences that could contribute. It's important to note that having one or more of these risk factors does not guarantee that you will develop Alzheimer's disease. They simply increase the odds. Everyone's experience with Alzheimer's is unique, and many factors, including lifestyle and overall health, can influence the course of the disease. While these risk factors increase the likelihood of developing Alzheimer's, there are also ways to potentially reduce the risk. Let's explore these in our next segment. How can we manage Alzheimer's disease? And what does current research tell us? When it comes to Alzheimer's, the key isn't in curing, it's in managing. While there's no known cure, certain strategies can potentially reduce the risk and mitigate the symptoms of this neurological disorder. First, a healthy lifestyle is paramount. Regular physical activity, a nutritious diet, avoiding tobacco and excessive alcohol, and managing stress can all contribute to your overall brain health. It's about creating an environment where your brain can thrive. Next, mental stimulation is crucial. Engaging